A decision has been reached in the Bo Bergdahl trial. A judge has ruled that the former Army sergeant should serve no prison time. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman is on the phone, joining me now to talk a little bit more about this. So, Ricky, uh, you know, this was a case that really people did not know which way it was going to go, particularly because of the new political climate that we find ourselves in, where the president was very willing to tweet his opinion on what should happen with Bo Bergdahl. In fact, during the campaign, he talked a lot about Bo Bergdahl. But no jail time. Break, us, break this whole thing down to us. Tell us what the judge was thinking. Well, I do think that this will come as a shock to many. Um, you have to remember that the prosecution itself was not asking for death or even life. The prosecution was asking for 14 years. The defense was asking for no jail time. Um, and, but the defense and the prosecution both agreed that there should be a dishonorable discharge, which there is. But this is a huge victory for the defense. So what might the judge have been thinking, if I can get hypothetically inside the judge's head, yeah. I think are two things. Number one was the defense argument that the five years that uh, Bowie Bergdahl spent um, as a prisoner in Afghanistan um, was punishment enough because I think none of us can imagine how bad that could have been. Um, and this was, by all reports, uh, truly a torturous uh, and inhumane time for him. And so what more would we do to him, hypothetically, might a judge say? The second thing is there was all kinds of evidence that was uh, brought in by the defense about his mental condition. And I know that uh, the public at large um, really doesn't take too well to uh, diminish capacity defenses, whether it's for the offense itself or, in this case, for the sentence itself, except if it gets backed up by sufficient expert testimony, um, a judge is unlikely to simply ignore it. And his mental health problems, according to the defense, were substantial indeed. Um, these were not something like um, someone having an episode, but that this was uh, a history, according to the defense, um, that really was rooted in true mental illness. He did plead guilty to desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. Could that have factored in with the decision uh, to not sentence him to any prison time? I think that the charges in and of themselves, uh, one of them carries this really extraordinary punishment. Um, I, I, don't, um, I don't think that it's the charges. I think the charges were more than sufficient. Mm. I do think that, and the plea was more than sufficient to have him do substantial time in jail, including the 14 years that prosecution was recommending. But, but I mean, Ricky, remember, the fact that he pled guilty, could that have been something that the judge was also course. considering? Okay. Of course. Um, whenever you plead guilty, that is what we call acceptance of responsibility. It is also um, a look at remorse, which he expressed. But I do think that when you look at his captivity, he was kept in a metal cage. He was beaten and nearly starved for much of that time. And outside of whether we watch an episode of Homeland um, in the early days, and it does flashbacks to Brody's as opposed to Bird Dolls, to Brody's fictional captivity, um, this, this is captivity that we do not tolerate, nor would we, in civilian life in the United States of America, nor in military life from any of the armed forces. So I do think that that has to be part of it. And it's really part of the idea, shocking as it may be to many of us, that that in and of itself, um, but coupled with his diagnosed personality disorder, which was um, apparently established long before he was enlisted, uh, let alone in, uh, uh, let alone serving in a combat area, that that had to be what weighed with the judge.
Yeah, in fact, there was an Article 32 hearing two years ago. The presiding officer also recommended that he did not, if there w that if there was going to be a court martial, that he not serve any time. And it was because of the abuse and torture that he endured over those five years. And then during this trial, uh, there was testimony that he provided what was called a gold mine of intelligence to the military. Which makes a big difference, obviously. You know, I mean, we've been talking recently, uh, politically, uh, in, uh, about politics in our conversation on CBS, and in terms of the recent uh, indictments and charges uh, coming out of um, uh, Robert Mueller's investigation. And when you cooperate, the more you cooperate, the more you work down your sentence. So the more information that you can provide, in addition to just a simple acceptance, well, maybe not so simple, in addition to an acceptance of responsibility uh, and remorse, um, the more that that is taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. I, I think, Emory, one of the things that is worthy of discussion is where you began, which is, uh, which brings us back to current events yet again. Um, the fact that President Trump uh, during the campaign uh, was, in essence, calling for his head, that I think many of us believed that um, uh, during this particular sentencing hearing that uh, any tr judge could not erase that from his or her mind. Um, and now we have uh, the situation of the terrorist in New York um, who, with the truck mowed down, all these people who were having a wonderful day riding bicycles on the West Side Highway of New York City. And President Trump is, again, calling for the death penalty. And it would be the first motion that a defense attorney would make is that uh, this alleged terrorist uh, could not get a fair trial in America by virtue of um, the president calling for the death penalty. Well, obviously, that didn't happen here, mm -hmm. um, that the prosecution did not get its 14 years in Bergdahl. So now the prosecution in the alleged terrorist case has an argument to say, see, it didn't matter what President Trump said as when he was campaigning or as president or as president that ultimately a jury will decide or a judge will decide based on the facts adduced at a trial. Ricky, that's a really, really interesting observation.